In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process for this loop and animation. Hi, I'm Adam Bennett. This is the Video Shop, and welcome to another tutorial in an ongoing series entitled Adam Has No Original Ideas of His Own to Watch Him Candidly Attempt to Recreate the Brilliant Animations of Others. A student recently drew my attention to this animation by Cub Studio and asked how it was done. I'll pop a link to them below. As they didn't have chat code particular and I like to work on the cheap. Yeah, it's good if you're a cheap bastard. I thought I'd see if I could recreate it without any third party plugins. This is the original and this is mine. The original is better, but mine is wider. So there you go. You can view the real time process of me creating this animation on my sister channel, The Video Shop Long Play. It's unedited, so you'll see me googling various expressions and also my After Effects repeatedly crashing. This is me begging After Effects to render at one point. <laughs> Look at your heart! Since I couldn't offer a free project file for that animation, as it's not my IP, I've tweaked it enough so it's different, but essentially still a ripoff. You'll find a link for the project file if you want it below. So I was thinking, what can I turn it into without doing loads of extra work? And I thought these speed lines, if you shorten them, look a bit like hundreds of thousands. And I already had a donut I'd animated for this animation I made a couple of years ago. So I could have the donut as a sort of Terminator 2 minigun, shooting all these hundreds of thousands out. <laughs> I love that line. Now, the eagle eyes among you might recognise that the colour palette and the look of this animation is a total ripoff of James Caron's work, which it is. So essentially I'm taking someone else's work and changing it by adding elements of someone else's work and then throwing in a bit of James Cameron for good measure. Also, you really don't see enough donuts in the motion design community nowadays. Okay, let's get started. This is the project file and like I said, I'm not going to do a step by step tutorial, just walk you through the project file like a ship motion graphics tour guide. This is the final comp, which we'll get back to shortly, but there's a few pre-renders in here. So the first thing I did when I recreated the Cub Studio animation was just create the basic scene of the road and the horizon and the sun. So if we if we preview that, it kind of looks like a uh, point of view of a drunk pilot, which actually, as I think about it, is probably a better premise for an animation. I'm fly. I'm pilot. The camera is you could you could keyframe this, but uh, I have used an expression on it. The the expression, which is in the description below, uh, the frequency is uh, the amount of times that the camera's that that value is going to wiggle, and then the amplitude is the amount. So we've got we've got separate wiggle expressions on the Z position and the Z rotation. So you can see here on the right hand side, the camera's rotating and it's sort of moving up and down. It's the Z position because I've rotated the, the camera. So even though you're probably thinking it's animating up and down on the Y, it's, uh, it's the Z just because of how all these layers are orientated. All of these are just 3D layers. That's the camera looking down the road and then this control here. So the loop time, if we go back to the expression again, you've got a uh, loop time here, which is expression controlled by this slider there. Anyone who's endured previous tutorials of mine will know I'm quite fond of having control null at the top, uh, where I put like, any, any expressions, anything that's driving anything in the animation below because it's easy to control because it's at the top. The the thing that makes this a bit of a cat-handed attempt to create their animation is the, if we look at the original, the wavy effect on the road, the only way I could think how to do it without uh, having particular is to use time displacement, which I'm not going to do a deep dive into that because I've covered it in previous tutorials. But what I did was to solo the road here and then pre-render this so that I could give it like a, a wavy effect. Uh, and if we just jump into the final comp and then go to the comp road, you will see what you end up with is this. And anyone who's familiar with time displacement will know now how that's done, but there's a comp in here, road and displace pre, here it is. So this is how that works. You've got the uh, the comp that we just looked at here. So the road is soloed. And then we've got an adjustment layer with time displacement on it. Then we have a mat with a gradient which is driving that displacement. I've pre-rendered 
some things because time displacement can, can slow, uh, certainly slow, slow down my computer. So that's pre-rendered. So what I did was have other comps with other elements in. So I'll look at the, we'll look at the buildings in a second. So the camera is expression controlled to that master camera in the road comp. If we press uh, EE for expressions and you can see it's looking for comp, road displace and that camera. If you had the same cameras with wiggle expressions, there'd be, there'd be different wiggles. The camera would be in different, different places, so uh, it wouldn't match up. Okay, so let's look at the buildings here. So this is our background. So I'll start going through the, the final comp, just solo the, the layers. So look, here's an easy one. It's a solid with a gradient. No. Okay, easy peasy. All right, so the next one, our, so our camera is just looking at what the camera here is doing. Switch this back to one view. And the, the buildings, these are, um, these are expression control buildings, which uh, if you go on, uh, you can find them a free rig on my Gumroad page. But basically uh, there's a control null and then you can change the, the number of windows, the spacing. Um, so actually let's create so windows across. We can increase the number there, but it'll automatically space them out. So this is sort of a mini promotion for my uh, expression control building rig if you wanted orange windows for whatever reason. Anyway, that's uh, that's free on my Gumroad if you if you want it. So pumped those together, sort of curved, and they're sitting in the background here. And the donut I'd already created for previous animation, so um, just pump that in the middle. The smoke is pre-rendered again for time, but we have the comp here and it's uh, CC Particle World. Smoke in the original animation, which sort of really helped sell the speed of the animation. So it's not quite as frenetic as the, as the Cup Studio one, but it's okay. The only thing that was an abject failure here, I'd say, is the, the lines in the middle of the road. The time displacement effect just uh, wasn't cutting it for this, but I just left, I just left it as it was. So this has got the road, so this pre-comp's got the road in it, and then the road lines, which is done exactly the same way. It's just, just use the thinner shape layer for that. Then I've got a sort of, to ch sort of che I've cheated it by using a luma mat here, which is done with CC cylinder. So you've got a, there we go, cylinder here. So CC cylinder, if we, rate, uh, if we rotate it this way, so you can see it's just the cylinder being rotated with a uh, with a blur on it here, just to sort of blur the bottom so that the final results, you've got a bit of blur here on those lines. So the spring pools, uh, there's a few expressions here. That was a bit of a render hog. My After Effects kept crashing when I when I did the Cub Studios version for the students, but weirdly it didn't crash when I made them sort of smaller sprinkle size rather than the long speed lines. But anyway, each one is a solid with a mask on, and um, let me just show you briefly. So create a solid and, and a mask. Then I stroke up and up. Now if this is a 3D layer, if you rotate it, it's gonna appear flat. But if you check continuous rasterization. You sort of have this 3D effect that works until you're exactly 90 degrees on and then it disappears. But otherwise, you get this 
uh, like solid line. To have them sort of disappear off into the distance, the trouble is they're, if they disappear off, it's gonna be the same stroke width. So there's an expression, press E, E. Uh, there's an expression on the, the brush size of the stroke, which is looking at another expression, which is distance to camera. So the distance to camera expression here, I've got that on a, um, I've added a slider and renamed it. And then that's got this expression here, which I could not type out from memory and I've copied and pasted it. But essentially the, the most important parts of this are the start fade and the end fade. So that's when it's gonna to start to disappear, depending on how close the camera is. And those are expression linked to here on our control now. So we've got a uh, start scale and end scale. So that's basically, these values here are just the distance from the camera where, so you can see here, there, that's as, that's as big as the stroke gets. And then there's sort of this period off into the distance. And the other expression is to randomly distribute them in um, their positions. We press P, there's an expression there as well. These again are linked, expression linked to these values here. So you've got the spread on the, the Z and the X, which isn't too much, but then the Y, which is where the cam which is um, where the camera's looking down. So they're all distributed in uh, randomly distributed in uh, in space. And then I've just keyframed the camera, so it's pushing through them. But then that camera is still expression linked. So the Z value and the X is still expression linked to that master camera. So the camera is still going up and down and rotating, but it's it's pushing through all these uh, sprinkles. So it gives the effect of them flying towards you, but also flying through them. And then the last expression is a random color expression. And press E again. And so that needs a, again, apparently, I, uh, I was uh, I was doing this very quickly, but it needs a, a slider control that you have on the, on the layer. And then this expression here, these are linking to, you can change the colors here. So you've got color one. So these are the different colors. It might seem a bit of a faff with all those expressions, but all I did was Google them, tweak certain values, and then have them uh, all controlled by a master null. But once, once you've done the work of setting them all up and they work, all you need to do is just control D. You know, those expressions are basically doing the work for you. And look, they're there somewhere. Pew, 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 pew. Wow, childish. Okay, so, so I pre-rendered those. And look at this beautiful live render queue. So just ProRes, uh, ProRes with Alpha. And that's, and that's it. So the rest is just color correction and vignetting. So we've got a couple of vignettes, which what, how much are they doing? Not a great deal, a little bit. Um, bit of curves to bump up the color, curves and vibrance. Then lastly, just to blur the edges here and punch in a little bit, uh, compound blur, and then transform to scale up because the blur leaves you with sort of a ugly edge there. And that's it. So still looks like the point of view of a drunken pilot. I'm back! But this time being attacked by a giant donut minigun. Thanks for watching, see you again soon.